person in the world has the potential. Um, some folks are just um, more natural at it. Maybe they've inherited it or something like that. But but so therefore, you know, like Adrian says, they will develop much quicker. Um, but really, the kind of teaching was that, that anyone could, if they wanted to, open themselves to the spirit world and allow themselves to develop. Adrian, did, did you um, get to a stage where you would give readings to people on a regular basis, or, or was it sort of the hobby that, that came out at Christmas and, and New Year? I mean, where, where did you go to in that? It started as a, as a personal interest, like a hobby. Um, but I found I was, doing I was doing readings for people in work at the time. And at one stage, I had queues of people wanting me to do readings for them. I, didn't, I never tried doing it as a profession to earn money from, and I never charged anyone at the time. But it was literally, it, it developed from an, a self-interest to being something I was doing for others uh, with it. And in some cases, I was, I was teaching them a little bit about, you know, about the tarot as well, what I knew and how I perceived things and how they could as well. Mm. So I was inadvertently teaching people too. <laughs> and were, were you accurate? I, I mean, worth it? I mean, you, you yes. get this sort of standing <laughs> joke, you know, I've, I've got a message, it's for B, it's for Barry, and somebody mm. says, I'm Brian. Oh, Brian, that's it, you know, you get that. But you, you were actually getting things correct. Yes, more times than I wasn't. Mm. Um, certain people, for some reason, just seem to be so much easier to give a reading to, and I could sit there and tell them all sorts about what's going on in their life now and where it was going, and find out months later that it did go down the pathway they, that I talked about, mm. and it wasn't something they'd done as a result of what I told them. Mm. It was something they were doing anyway. So, in some ways, it was quite scary. But then there were other ones where it was—it just seemed to be more of a challenge. It just—it just didn't seem to happen. You didn't seem to have anything for them. Um, so. I'm, I'm, and you, you just came up with, you didn't lie to them as such, but you just told them that you were having a problem and for some reason that you, you can't do them a reading or, yeah. you know, that did happen occasionally. But more times than not, I did give information that seemed to be quite accurate, especially about their own lives that there's no way I could have known without, well, there's no way I could have known. Right. I, I think it's true that not every uh, medium is, is like that. I, I think some sort of work off of um, things that people say to them, and, and it's more yeah. intuition than that. But, but what you are saying, of course, is there was a supernatural source. There was a source outside of you, or, or inside of you, but a source beyond just your natural mind yeah. that was actually communicating to you this information. Yeah, I'd, I never heard voices, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Um, now, did, did you have a sense of power? Did, did you feel... Yeah, hey, this, this is great, I've got power over it. I mean, I've talked to some spiritualists in the past that feel that, and I'm not sure all do, but did you have that sense? Yeah, I did. There, there was, I mean, I, virtually word for word there, I remember at one point saying to myself, wow, you know, <laughs> I've got this ability, you know, this is fantastic. And I did see it that way. I did perceive it that way. Right. Now, did you ever sit down and think to yourself, where does this come from? Because one of the questions I always love to ask, you know, when I meet people that are in occult, supernatural, spiritual realm, that have different experiences, but all the same, they, they feel something, they think something, you know, as you say, sometimes you hold an object and you get a picture, yeah. and, you know, whatever it is, and whether yeah. it's a crystal ball bumps on your head or whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. you, and, and, and you get that. Um, I always ask them, but where does, where does that power, where, where does it come from? Did, did you ever stop to think, if I'd have met you while you were still in that, and I'd have asked you that question, how would you have answered me? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's normal where, where does it come from? <laughs> where does it come from? Um, I wouldn't have been able to say at the time. Right. It's, yes. Because I didn't, have, I didn't have a biblical background to, to base my foundations on. So... Um, I wouldn't have associated it with being evil at the time. Mm. It's interesting because most, most answers I have got are, are that answer. To yeah. one form or another, it's, it's, in summary, it's, it's what you've said. Yeah. Um, so you, you felt, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but again, usually what goes on after that, and tell me if this is what you do, because it was good, 
because yeah. it was doing good. To it. You were not doing any harm to people. That's what you could Correct. say. It yeah. must be good. It, that, it, it, that, yeah. that was your, your reasoning as well, was it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, was was that your reasoning, Laura? I mean, it, it you know because because it doesn't do harm, it must be good. Well, definitely. I mean, the the, the spirit, so-called spirit guides and so-called dead relatives, seem so so genuine and authentic, and and people were helped a lot in their lives. So certainly didn't doubt there was anything wrong with it, or certainly didn't think the spirits might be impersonators or, um, you know, masquerading, trying to be the relative. You know, trying yeah, to pretend. Yeah. No, we never would have thought that at all. So we totally thought it was it was really good. And if anyone who wasn't a spiritualist, you know, said something nasty to us about it, we'd be really quite hurt and feel that's rather cruel. You know, right. we're we're good people and it's a good religion. Yeah, definitely. Did, did anybody ever say to you, mm -hmm. "It's of the devil"? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what what was your reaction to that? Yeah, um, I was quite young at the time, and I think it was a couple of Mormon men that came to the door. And um, they got chatting and I said, no thanks, I've got my own religion. They asked what it was and, and one of them did literally point at me and say, you've let Satan into your house. Now, now I realise that's true, but in those days I was really, I was quite shocked and hurt and I thought that was not, not a nice thing to say. So I, I do kind of encourage Christians, please don't yes. say that to, to <laughs> spiritualist <laughs> New Agers. They're not ready to hear that yet and, and it's That's going right. to hurt their feelings dreadfully. They think they're doing good, so yeah. you have to yeah. be, be wise and yeah, explain it to them nicely, but don't be oh. That's yeah, we're, we're coming to that, but I think it's a very good point. Let's underline that now. We'll talk a bit about that later, but it is important. Y y you can't condemn them because here, both of you, and genuinely, mm -hmm. at that time, you felt what you were doing was good. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you didn't feel it was bad. Therefore, there was no way in which, until until you had that conviction, yeah. there's no way we, you know, you, you could be condemned for what you were doing in that sense. Um, where, where then, uh, Adrian, um, in all of this, you're doing good, you're a fairly successful medium, um, you know, getting cases right and, you know, and, you know, feeling good about it sometimes and all the rest. Yeah. Where, where did the questions start coming? Because you, you're going to move all right away from that in, in, in a few months' time, you know, from that. Where did that all begin? The doubts, the questions, is it God? And, and, and coming to that conclusion, how did that start? Well, for me, it was actually the breakdown of my marriage five years ago. Really? So, um, um, I, I first found myself, uh, when I was going through my divorce, I, was, I found myself one night sitting outside a locked church at seven o'clock, crying my eyes out, and I said, God, you know, help me. You know, things are falling apart here. And uh, he answered. Now, why did you call out to God? I mean, you know, why didn't you go to your tarot cards? Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, even when I was involved with doing the tarot cards, I, I was originally told to ask for your guides for protection yes. while you're doing this. And I, I had this funny idea in my head was, why would I ask my guides for protection? Why don't I just ask God for protection? Because if there's anything bad potentially going to get to me, I'd rather have... God on my side than I would boss, a third yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what I found myself doing. Yeah. Uh, so to me, it just seemed natural. You know, at the end of the day, the ultimate power is God.